Oh my gosh, you guys, my low back is hurting today. I don't know why. I guess it's going to be a low back day then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, let's see. Heather, Noel, awesome. You guys are awesome. <laughs> and Restore fell on me this month. I can't believe it. The gods have blessed me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Guys, and I have, I don't know if you were here last time when I tried to do my sound bath, and it kind of works. So if I put the musician sound on or whatever, and look, I have my sound bath ready. My sound bath instruments are at the ready. So at the end, you're going to have a, a nice sound bath, or maybe not nice. If it's not nice, just mute me and play your own music. <laughs> No, it sounded good last time. I just put my phone up by my head and it okay. felt immersive. <laughs> oh, good. It's like, it's not as good as in person, but it's better than nothing, I feel. So, okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Low back. Let me take one more drink of orange juice. I've been drinking like fresh squeezed orange juice like every day. It's so good. Mm. It's my lifeblood. Okay. <laughs> what i keep saying okay let's start you guys i hope everyone either has a bolster or if you don't have a bolster get something that you can substitute as a bolster so maybe you get like a blanket and like roll it up and maybe you can put two blankets so depending on how big your blanket is you can judge what you need to do <laughs> But just make it as close to a bolster as you can. Or sometimes I take a rolled up yoga mat if you have an extra yoga mat and you can roll like a thin, a thinner fleece around it or something like that. So take your bolster behind you or whatever you're using as your bolster and just lay down on top of it. And if you don't have anything to use as a bolster, not a huge deal, you can just lay on the ground we have neutral spine. And everybody bring your feet to the ground. So kind of scoot your hips around and find a position that feels like you can be here for a while. So you don't want it to hurt your low back. If it's hurting your low back, scoot your hips further away from the edge of your bolster. And then feet on the ground, knees bent, bring your feet out nice and wide. So like mat width distance apart. And you can either let your knees point up but you want it to feel like if they were to fall either way, they would fall in. And if you want to, you can even let them fall in. And let's just bring our arms out to our side. So not all the way out like they're in a T, but not all the way down by our side, somewhere in between. And see if you can let your palms face up. So feel your shoulders kind of open up. You might even adjust yourself around. Close your eyes, or if you prefer to keep your eyes open, just lower your gaze and soften your gaze. Then let's start today with a few different breath techniques, and I'll just cue you through them so you don't really have to think too much about it, just follow my cues. So wherever you're at in your breath, exhale all the way to empty. We're going to start with box breathing, six seconds on each side. So inhale for one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold full, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, two, three, four, five, Six, hold empty. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold full. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold empty. Two, Three, four, five, six. Inhale. Two, three, 
four, five, six, hold, full, two, three, four, five, six, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, hold, empty, two, three, four, five, six. Great big, huge inhale. Fill up as big as you can. Hold. See if you can sip in a little bit more. And then open your mouth and just sigh. Let it go. Ha. Ah. Veloma breath. Inhale just into low belly and pause. Take that same breath up into mid ribs, mid abdomen. Pause. All the way up, chest, shoulders, upper back, crown of your head. Hold. Exhale slowly for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All the way to empty and begin again. Low belly, low back. Mid ribs, mid abdomen, side bodies. Chest, shoulders, upper back. Fill up as big as you can. Release slowly for 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All the way to empty one last time. Low belly, low back, hips, pelvis. Mid ribs, mid back, side bodies. All the way up, fill up, chest, shoulders, upper back, crown of your head. Hold in that fullness. Hold, hold, hold. Let it go slowly for 10, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All the way to empty. Inhale, fill up. Take that little extra sip of air at the top. And then open your mouth when you're ready. Sigh, let it go. Ha. Ah, good job. And just take a moment, breathe in your natural way and soak in the residue. Feel whatever there is to feel. Notice whatever there is to notice. No judgment, simply observation. So maybe there's a lot to feel. Maybe there's not much to feel. And then if you want to, you're welcome at any point during our restorative practice today to use your ujjayi breath. So if you like ujjayi breath, if it's in some way relaxing to you, I love ujjayi breath, so feel free to use it. But if you just want to breathe in your own way, breathe in your own way, just breathe a little bit deeper than you do in your everyday life. So a little more intentionally, more mindfully. From this position, friends, Let's start to just ease our way over to either side, fetal position. So just nice and easy, come onto your side body. And when you're on your side, take a moment there and just kind of rest. So let yourself really give in to gravity and breathe into your low back. So we were just in spinal extension, little gentle heart opener. Now we're in spinal flexion, we're curling in. So nice little counter pose, take some deep breaths. And then you can either just use your hand to kind of push your bolster out of the way behind you or move your prop out of the way. Or however you want to, you can move your bolster or your prop out of the way and then just come back to your spine. But now you're just down on the ground. And from a neutral spine, hug your knees in and then just gently rock side to side a little bit. You can hug your knees in or you can just hold your knees. They don't need to be hugging in necessarily, so whatever feels good. You can keep your knees together. Or you can move your knees in different directions. Maybe you feel into your hips a little bit more. And then bring your feet back down. Bring your feet out to the width of your mat again, so nice and wide. And then this time, bring your arms to a cactus or a goalpost position, just resting against the ground. Let both of your knees fall over to the right side. 
And then as much as you can, let gravity take hold. So especially your top knee or left knee, if you want to, you can bring your right foot to the outside of your left knee and just gently work it closer to the ground. So left knee, we want to have the intention of working it forward and down away from our upper body. Deep breaths. And just let your body melt as much as possible. Visualize the space in your low back and breathe down into it. Uh. And then end of your next exhale, friends. Bring your knees back up to center. Draw them in again. So either gently draw them in, grab your kneecaps, or maybe give them a squeeze in, rock it out if you want to. Even a happy baby pose. Happy baby pose it out for a few breaths. And then we're going to take same pose on the other side. So no rush. As you're ready, feet to the ground, knees bent, feet nice and wide, mat width distance. The wider, the better, really. Just let your knees fall over to the left side. Arms in a goalpost position and big, spacious breaths down into your pelvis. <sighs> Open mouth sides, always welcome, especially at your own house. There's no one around you and you don't feel too weird making some noise. Make some noise with your breath. Ah, it might feel really freeing. It might feel really weird. And if it feels weird, get curious about that. I didn't say this, but hopefully if you wanted to do it, you did it anyways. Outer left foot to the outside of right knee. If you want, take about three more rounds here. All right, friends, very bottom of your next exhale. So take it all the way to empty and then bring your knees back up slowly. Hug them back in gently. So maybe you start by just grabbing your kneecaps and then eventually you squeeze in. Maybe you even curl up into a little tiny potato bug ball. Maybe you turn it into a happy baby. And just kind of rock it out for a couple more rounds. And then if you can remember what side you rolled onto fetal position, roll the other side, roll onto your other side fetal position for a few breaths. If you can't remember, no big deal, just roll onto either side. Most likely this is the side that feels a little less natural. Curl in, so spinal flexion. You're curling into yourself and breathe into your back body. Uh, all right, use your arm strength to just ease your way on up. Just come into a seated position. I'm going to face towards you. You can face whichever direction you want. Well, I have the camera really low. All right. So just find a comfortable seat. And if that means you're sitting up on top of something, awesome. Whatever feels good. Arms down by your sides. Exhale in your breath. Inhale, stretch your arms up. 
And as you exhale, right elbow under left elbow, either eagle arms or give yourself a hug. Wrap your arms behind you. So grabbing behind your shoulders. You can take eagle arms. See if you can start to lift your elbows a little bit up and away. Take about three more deep breaths wherever you're at. End of your next exhale, slowly, mindfully release your arms, arms to the sky. Bring your right hand down by your side, a little side body stretch. So walk your right fingertips to the right, bend your elbow a little bit. Reach through your top arm. You can keep reaching, or if you want to, bring your hand, so bend your top elbow, hand behind your head. Not behind in the back of your head, but kind of grab hold on the right side of your head above your ear. Does that make sense? And then use your arm to help your gaze up. So see if you can lift your elbow up and let your gaze follow, let your head follow. So your heart starts to look up as well. Keep both sit bones rooted. Breathe into your left side a lot. Take one more round. Use your strong core at the bottom of your next exhale to lift back up right, arms reach up. And we'll take that same thing. Ah, my nose itches. We'll take that same thing on the other side. So left hand down, walk your left hand, your left fingertips out. Maybe bending your left elbow so your forearm gets closer to the earth. And then this right side gets nice and long. Sit bones stay grounded and rooted. Mm, you can stay right here if you want. Totally good, totally fine. Or option to bring your right hand to the left side of your head above your left ear. So it's like you're kind of just like grabbing hold of your head. You're wrapping your arm around your head. And then start to lift your elbow up. Aim it up and even start to aim it back a little bit if you can. Use your hand to support your head. So your head and your neck, they're not straining. Breathe. Big, spacious breaths. Ah, soft through your face. Last couple of rounds on this side. <clears throat> Bottom of your next exhale, use your strong core. Rise back up, arms reach up. And I guess what, we're gonna take our eagle arms on the other side. I believe it's left under right this time. If you know you did the opposite, do the other side. I'm pretty sure this time we go left under right if you're with me. So eagle arms or grab hold behind your shoulders, totally fine, either way. If you're in eagle arms, try to get your arms as centered as possible and then start to lift your elbows up a little bit. Breathe. Ooh. Big, spacious breaths. About three more. If you want, you can even play with rounding a little bit or lifting your elbows more, arching a little bit. Take one last big deep breath. Next inhale. Release slowly, arms to the sky, and then exhale, hands behind you, and just come to your fingertips. So fingertips behind you, roll your shoulders back, lift your heart up, puff up your chest. If you're on a bolster or anything, you might have to come off of it, or you can bring your hands to the ground behind you if it's not too scary. Pop up through your chest, breathe into your heart space one last round. Okay, and then let that all go. Come forward to hands and knees, tabletop. So tabletop position. And we're just gonna go right in to thread the needle. So make sure your knees are at least hip width distance apart. Take your right arm out, take your right arm up, breathe in. And then exhale, thread your right arm through. Mm, reach, 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 and then come down to rest outside of your shoulder on the ground, outside of your head on the ground. 
If there's any way in which you want to work this pose, feel free. So you can make it a little more restorative if you want. You can make it a little more challenging if you want, just depending on how you feel. Good job. Take about three to five more rounds here. Really focus on breathing down into your low back. All right, if you do happen to have your left hand lifted, set your left hand down, same with your left knee. And then on an inhale, unthread your right arm, reach it all the way up one more time, open up, open up. Set your right hand down. Sit back in a child's pose. So toes together, big toes touch, knees nice and wide, hips to your heels, forehead to your mat. Breathe. You let this be really restful. Just bend your elbows and let your forearms rest. Or you can make it a little more active. Really actively walk your fingertips forward. Lift up to your fingertips. So make little tents with your hands. And then push forward and down with your fingertips. You feel that activation in your arms, your shoulders. So every single pose, really, there's a more active way and a more passive way of being in it. You haven't figured that out yet? Get curious about it. Take one more breath in your child's pose. And then let's rise, tabletop, hands and knees. And for a moment, downward facing dog. Make this, I don't want to say a gentle downward facing dog, but maybe just slightly more gentle than you would move into it in a power practice. So maybe a bigger bend in your knees than usual, or maybe your feet are a little bit wider than usual, uh, or maybe you're just approaching it from a softer place, whatever that means. Maybe it's just energetically. So give yourself a moment to just feel into the length in your down dog, into the space that your down dog offers. And then ever so gently, just set your knees back on the ground. And we'll take our thread the needle pose on the other side. So make sure your knees, again, are at least hips with distance apart. Take your left arm out and up. Breathe in here. And then exhale to thread it through. So reach and then rest. Anywhere you want to take it on this side. We'll be here for a while. Take about five more breaths. Good job, you guys. Last couple rounds. If you do happen to have your right hand or your right knee lifted, bring them back down. 
On an inhale, unthread your left arm. So push into the ground, unthread your left arm, reach it up. And then left hand comes down. This time, walk your knees together so they touch. And walk both of your hands off the right edge of your mat. Reach your hips back into the left. Gently press your left armpit towards the earth and breathe into your left side. And slowly switch to the other side. You can either stay low or you can come back up kind of on hands and knees and walk your hands through center, whatever works best. This time really working your right side long. Press your right armpit down. Breathe into your right side body. Good job, you guys. Make your way slowly back to hands and knees. And then once again, down dog. But just approach it in a slightly softer way, whatever that means for you. Maybe you kind of pedal out your heels or give your head a little shake, a little nod. Slowly, ever so slowly, begin to crawl your hands to the very back of your mat and you'll find yourself eventually in a forward fold at the back edge of your mat. So eventually all the weight comes into your feet Bring your feet at least hips width distance apart, maybe a little bit wider, but keep all of your toes facing forward. Keep a little or even a big bend in your knees. Let your neck relax. Let your arms hang heavy and super, super slowly start to roll all the way up. Push your feet into the ground as you roll. Eventually your head stacks. And just roll up and down ever so slowly a few more times. So spinal roll up, spinal roll down. Imagine your spine is a string of pearls or a link of chains. And you really want to try to move one pearl or one chain link at a time. Imagine there is an invisible wall right behind you. And you're trying not to touch your butt to that wall as you roll up and down. Slow, deep breath. You can plug in your breath however it makes most sense in your body. Just make sure you're breathing deeply with awareness. Maybe Ujjayi. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, friends, just end up in your forward fold and kind of hang out there for a moment, maybe ragdoll it out. <sighs> All right, next, inhale, lift halfway. And then plant your hands or fingertips and like you're an animal, like you're a four-legged creature. Try to be really light and walk your hands forward. Come into a plank or a modified plank so knees can absolutely come down. My knees are coming down today. Take an inhale on the top of your push-up. Spread your fingers really wide. And then all the way, all the way down. Woo-wee. Good job. Sphinx pose. So bring your forearms to the ground in front of you. Elbows under shoulders, forearms parallel. Now let's pay attention for a moment to our lower body. So press down through your shoelaces and imagine you're trying to spread your toes and press your toenails down. Now notice if you're kind of just dropping into your low back. Draw your belly button in and up towards your spine and reach your tailbone down towards your heels. Keep pressing through your shoelaces. Press down through your forearms and imagine you're trying to pull your heart, your chest through your shoulders. 
breathe. Reach your tailbone towards your heels. Draw your belly button in and up. Press down through your toenails. Lengthen through the back of your neck so your gaze might be down a little bit. Take one more inhale. Press through thumbs and index fingers. Exhale, let it all go. Spider-Man Cobra, so hands out wide, wider than your yoga mat. Lift to fingertips, inhale, lift your heart, tone your belly. The tailbone reaches towards your heels. Exhale, take a little twist to your right side. Hip your left shoulder down a little bit. Stay here for an extra breath. Inhale through center, only lift as high as feels good to you. Exhale, twist to the other side, right shoulder dips a little bit. Take an extra breath. Inhale, center, lift your heart, press through your shoelaces. Exhale, release. Press up to hands and knees. Mm. All right, my friends. From hands and knees, we're just going to move into what I call box pigeon. So kind of bring your right shin up towards the front of your mat and then just sit over onto your right hip. So we're letting our hips open. And then I'll take my socks off so it's easier to see what my legs are doing. All right. So bring your front shin so it's parallel with the front edge of your mat. So scoot your hips around if you need to. Front shin, that's all we care about. Front shin parallel to the front edge of your mat. Your back leg can do whatever it wants to. So it can be in this kind of 90 degree pinwheel shape or if you like reaching your back leg back further, if that feels good, that's fine. And just kind of turn your upper body to face your front foot and sit up as tall as possible. Inhale here, flex your front toes. Hinge at your hips, reach your heart towards your front toes. Reach, reach, reach. So lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. You can't lengthen anymore. You can just relax into it. Let your spine round. Big deep breaths. If you want to make it harder and you want to make it more active, you can bring your right elbow to the sole of your right foot. Press your fist into your left palm and then work a twist. And you'll also increase the stretch you're feeling in your right hip. Just an option, you do not have to force anything. So I'm not even gonna take that. Today I'm just gonna stay right here. We've got about five to 10 deep breaths. Visualize your breath moving down into your right hip. Intend your breath, move it down into your right hip. So use your intention to move it all the way down. Even if it doesn't actually happen, the visualization, you're creating space and softening in that area just by bringing awareness to it. Those big deep breaths, they signal to your body that you're fine, you're safe, you can relax, you don't have to freak out. Even if you're uncomfortable right now, everything's okay, I promise. So it's like you're holding yourself with those big, deep, intentional breaths. Take about three more. Exhale out your mouth anytime. Uh... Good job, you guys. Slowly start to ease your way up. And then from here, we're just going to come into a seated position. So you can swing your back leg around nice and easy. Give your legs a little shake out in front of you. And then bring your feet to the ground with your knees bent, feet mat width distance apart, hands behind you. You can point your fingers whatever way you want to, but try not to roll your shoulders forward like I'm doing now. Roll your shoulders back, lift your heart up. With your feet nice and wide, take some windshield wipers side to side, slowly, intentionally. So really focus on moving your top knee forward and down, lengthening that entire side of your body. 
Back and forth with your breath, feeling whatever there is to feel. Good job. One or two more rounds. These are super therapeutic if you allow them to be. Take them really mindfully. Oh, yeah. All right. Come back to center. And we're just going to bring the soles of our feet together. Knees apart. Baddha Konasana. If you want to, you can sit up on top of your bolster. And if you want extra, you can put your feet up on top of your bolster. So this would make it more intense. So don't feel like you have to do that. Only do it if you can sit like I'm sitting with my butt reaching back. So if you're doing this and you feel like you're gonna fall backwards, no bueno, don't do that. See if you can get to a point where you feel like your tailbone's reaching back. Press your heels together, hold on to the front of your ankles or the front of your shins, inhale, lengthen. It's like you wanna pull your shoulders back and your heart forward. Exhale, keep reaching your heart forward as you hinge at your hips. So butt reaches back for as long as it can. Then just relax into it. Let your spine round and breathe. You can walk your hands forward if you want to. Bend your breath down into your hips, into your pelvis, into your low back. Notice whatever's flowing through, any sensations that are there. Soften your jaw, your forehead, your eyebrows. Last couple of rounds. And then end of an exhalation, slowly just roll back up. You can use your hands to kind of help yourself if you want to. So roll your hands in, eventually your head stacks. We're going to come back to hands and knees for a moment. So you can just kind of roll over your feet or however you want to get there. Hands and knees, intuitive movement, anything that would feel good. And if that means moving into a down dog and stretching from there, feel free. So give yourself a moment just to feel around what feels good, what feels not so good. We're getting ready to move into our box pigeon on our left side. So if you're in down dog and you want to move into it from there, you're more than welcome to. If you're on your hands and your knees, just kind of, kind of start to scoot your left shin up. And then let your hips sit over onto your left outer butt cheek. Once you're there, you can kind of adjust however you need to to get your front shin parallel to the front edge of your mat. You can do whatever you need to with your back leg. And once you're kind of like, okay, I like that. Yes, that's good. Try as best you can. Flex your left toes and turn your heart, turn your shoulders to look towards your front foot. This side's a lot tighter for me personally. Whenever you're ready, think heart towards your front toes. So hinge at your hips. And then whenever you can't go any further with length, you can just let yourself relax into it more. If you want to, left elbow to the sole of your left foot and take that prayer variation. Left fist presses into your right palm. And you can use that as gentle leverage. Ooh, this is enough for me personally today. So this is where I'm gonna stay and just wherever you're at, breathe. Big spacious breaths. Visualize your breath moving down into those tight spaces, softening those tight spaces.
Oh. Take about four or five more rounds. You can move your upper body around a little bit. This is a safe place to work with your hips. So don't be scared. You can explore. Keep that flexion through your front toe. Keep breathing. Last couple of rounds. Maybe a big open mouth sigh would feel really nice. Um, and then slowly start to ease your way up into a seat. So you might just kind of swing your back leg around or whatever needs to happen. Give your legs a nice little shake out, shaky, shaky, shaky. After a few shakies, windshield wipers, side to side. Oh yeah. And if you want to, you can start to move these windshield wipers all the way down onto your back. If you're ready to be on your back at any point, just start to come all the way down to your back and windshield wiper it out right there. All right, and then feet together, knees apart. If you're not on your back yet, come down to your back. Feet together, knees apart, Supta Baddha Konasana. If this bothers your low back, scoot your feet further away from your upper body. Bring your arms kind of by your sides, not right by your sides, but a little bit out. Palms face the ground. Focus on pressing your heels together. Exhale. And as you inhale, lift your butt up. Press your heels, lift your butt. Squeeze your outer glutes. And imagine somebody's pressing your knees down. Lift your hips higher. Breathe. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Press your heels together. Lift your hips. Squeeze your outer glutes. One more inhale, lift. Exhale, release gently. Just relax here for a moment. If it would feel good, only if it would feel good, you can kind of bounce your knees up and down. We're going to take one more round like that. We're going to hold it a little bit longer. If it's bothering your low back, scoot your feet further away from your upper body. Exhale, all your air out. Press your heels, press your palms down. Inhale, lift your butt up. Doesn't have to be super high. Imagine someone's pressing your knees down and you're pressing against them, lifting your hips up. Lift, lift, lift. Squeeze your outer glutes. Oh, it's so hard, I know. Knees towards the ground, hips towards the sky. Squeeze your butt, press your heels, soften your face. Hold here. One more round of big deep breath, lift. And let it go. Bring your knees up. Feet apart, knees together, and just breathe for a moment. Breathe down into your pelvic bowl if you want. One hand to heart, one hand to belly. Happy baby pose. Mm. Anywhere you want to go from happy baby. So you can just rock. You can extend one or both legs. You can bring your legs together. You can bring the soles of your feet together. And from your happy baby, just move through any finishing poses you feel like moving through, any last little stretches or movements you want to take for yourself. And then make your way into a really comfortable Shavasana. So if that means corpse pose, perfect. But if that means using your bolster or your props in some way, like really, maybe you want to like wrap yourself up like a cocoon in a blanket. 
cocoon yourself up in a blanket like you're a baby. Maybe you want to use your bolster under your knees or under your spine, goddess pose again. But really set yourself up for just like ultimate relaxation. And when you're ready to relax, when you're ready for your ultimate relaxation, <laughs> maybe you want to give yourself just one last big, huge falling out breath. Uh, maybe you want to do anything else to just kind of drop in. And this is a this is a poem by Rumi. It's pretty simple, but I really like it. <laughs> Rumi. It says, I have lived on the lip of insanity, wanting to know reasons, knocking on a door. It opens. I have been knocking from the inside. <laughs> I have lived on the lip of insanity, wanting to know reasons, knocking on a door. It opens. I have been knocking from the inside. So how many times, you guys, are we knocking from the inside? Probably almost always. Every time we're asking a question outside of ourselves, we need to come back, ask ourselves. We're just looking for positive, like reinforcement of what we already know, what we already want. Come back inside. Come back to what you already know in your heart. So these last few moments are for you. They're for you to just be with yourself. I'm going to try my best. Turn on musician sound. Um, so hopefully it sounds okay. If it sounds awful, just mute me on your end and put on your own music or do your own little sound for yourself. <laughs> you can hum your own little tune. Um, but yeah, as, as best you can on this platform, on this online platform, just let yourself feel into the vibrations. Feel them in your body, not just in your head, not just with your ears, but let them really resonate and just notice what comes, notice what goes.
I have lived on the lip of insanity, wanting to know reasons, knocking on a door, it opens. I have been knocking from the inside. Big, huge inhale. And open your mouth, let it go. Ah, just feeling all that energy inside of you, around you. Allowing it in some way to just kind of settle a little bit. You can start to move, wiggle, any movements that would feel good. Maybe a full body stretch, waking yourself up. And then as you're ready, roll to either side fetal position. You choose which way you want to go. One last time, just rest there on your side. Really curling into yourself this pose that feels nurturing and safe. So really, really good for us to feel nurtured and safe to feel into a sense of support and stability. And then we use that to go out into the world and do things that are hard and sometimes scary and uncomfortable. We have this place within us that we can come back to always. It's safe to feel into that, connect with that. It's always there. And then use your arms to guide yourself up into seated meditation. We'll just close our practice intentionally together. And let's just ohm together. So hopefully you're in a space where you don't feel too weird, making a little bit of noise. And we'll just do one ohm. So exhale all your air out. Hands to your heart, close your eyes. Exhale all your air out. All your air out. <laughs> Big inhale, fill up with your voice. Oh. Thank you guys so, so much for letting me guide you today, for taking time to slow down and connect with yourself in a deeper way. Namaste. Thanks so much, Katie. That was awesome. Was it okay? The sound? <laughs> really great. It was it, it was so awesome. Yeah. It was okay. Okay. I'm just like, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. It can't get like worse than just sitting there and quiet. I mean, not worse, but it's like, I'm not going <laughs> to ruin quiet. Worst case, just turn me on mute, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really good, actually. It added a lot. So. Beautiful. Thank you. It adds a little something. Spices <laughs> it up. All right, friends. I'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Katie. Katie. Bye. Bye. Maybe. Uh, there we go.